Before giving you a tour of my kosher kitchen, I wanted to explain what makes a kitchen kosher. A kosher kitchen is basically a kitchen in which food is prepared according to the Jewish kosher dietary laws, which basically means that meat and dairy are kept separate and only kosher ingredients are used. Hi everyone and welcome back to Sonia's Prep where I share with you about Orthodox Jewish living, homemaking videos and organization. And if you enjoy these types of videos, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to this channel to see more videos like this. This week's video is going to be all about my Orthodox Jewish kosher kitchen, how I maintain it, why we keep milk and meat separate and how I'm able to do so in my kitchen. Now let's get prepping and I'll show you how I do it all. Firstly, when you enter an Orthodox Jewish kosher kitchen, you're going to see a mezuzah on the door like most of the doorposts in a Jewish home. It's a sign of protection and like God is watching over us. So as you enter, you will definitely see this and we customarily kiss it and let's go in and I'll show you the rest of the kitchen. To the left of when you enter the kitchen, I have my hot water urn over there. And that's just to ensure that we have some hot water to drink on Shabbat and holidays when we're not allowed to use any hot water that has not been plugged in beforehand. So right now this is off, but before Shabbat, I will fill this up and turn it on. As you can see, there is a different mode. It's in, in Hebrew, but the first one says Chol, which means for every day. Second one says Shabbat. And then the third one says Yom Tov. So um, depending on the holiday or Shabbat, we will switch on the different programs so that it ensures that everything is going to be perfectly hot for us. On the bottom of that, I have my tea station because it just makes sense. I have my hot water urn there and I have all of my teas in this cupboard right here in this drawer. And on the very top, I do have all of my cups that we use for our tea that's not dairy. I have my tea kettle there with some sugar and all the way on the tippy top I have my other small cups but we hardly use them. And in this bottom drawer I have my oils, it's right next to my oven so it's perfect. I have sesame oil, avocado oil, vegetable oil, all in here. I also have Pam spray. So when I'm making some eggs or anything like that, I have that all right here next to my oven. All of these oils are also dairy free and uh, they're parv, so I'm able to use this for dairy and for meat. On the tippy top above my range, I have a cabinet that just has a vent inside of it and some miscellaneous random items that I, that I don't use daily. This is our gas stove. I'm so excited to have this in my previous home if you've seen any of my videos. We had an electric stove and it was fine. It did the job, but I do definitely love my gas stove. I picked this up just to show you. This uh, oven came with this attachment and I can only use this for either milk or meat. I cannot use this attachment for both. So I chose to leave this for dairy. So I make my pancakes here and my eggs, especially when all the kids are usually lined up on a Sunday for breakfast. I make a whole big batch of pancakes or eggs or omelets on here. And I usually store this on the bottom of my oven. So, but otherwise this entire stove top can be used for either meat or dairy, um, but this attachment can't. This oven is an oven that I only use for meat stuff. So I make my chicken, my meat, my fish in here as well. I won't make any sorts of pizzas or lasagnas in here. If I wanna make anything dairy, I will do that in my oven right behind me. But it is totally possible to use your oven for both meat and dairy with the process of koshering it in between. Uh, some rabbis say that it's enough to just, well, I'm not going to get into it. Everyone should ask their rabbi how to properly use one oven for milk and meat because I was never lucky enough to have two ovens. I'm just blessed right now that I'm able to have it. I was married for 16 years 
uh, with no two ovens and I managed it just fine. Um, also, my parents didn't have two ovens and actually they still don't have two ovens. They had to make do with one oven. So you don't have to be fancy schmancy to be able to have dairy and meat work for you with one oven. It is definitely doable. So please consult your rabbi as to how you can actually use the same oven for both milk and meat. Right next to my stove is my one of my favorite cabinets. It's my spice drawer. I totally enjoyed putting this together and I did include this in an organization video of when I just moved into this house. Everything is labeled and looks great and I love that it's right next to my stove top so that it's easy and functional when I'm actually cooking in the kitchen. The next drawer, right underneath it, I changed. If you've seen my previous organization videos, I had different things in here, but it just made sense to put all of my platters and things that I serve my food in right next to my oven and my stove. So that is just functional, it makes sense. So all my large platters are here and all of my thinner ones are there as well. Now we're moving on to our lower shelf and in this lower shelf I have all of my aprons, towels, my dish drying mats and all of my dish rags in here, my oven mitts and placeholders so they're all right here. I did uh, implement a lazy Susan in here. I didn't want this corner space to go to waste so I have this organizer over here where I keep my lids, my big bowls, my very large glass plates, and my skillet over here that's dairy. It doesn't fit anywhere else, so I keep it right here. I have my next shell over here. It's pretty bare. You can't see all the way up, but there are some empty shelves up there. I just have my JB Geller spices here my croutons, my matzo ball soup mixes, some pastas, soup mixes again, and it's beautiful and I love it. It's right next to my stove, so it really makes sense to have it there. And in this section right here, I have all of my baking stuff. So I have my brown sugar, my cocoa powders, cornstarch, uh, confectioner sugar, my uh, tons of baking stuff. Not 100% happy with the organization in this corner space right here, but one day I hope to get some more smaller organizational bins, decan things, and hopefully I'll make it look all nice and pretty. And I'll take you one day along and I'll show you just how I did it all. Right above my sink, I have some, they're pretty bare uh, cupboards. I have over here some of my meat baking dishes and the rest of the cupboards are pretty empty but I'm sure I'll fill them up very, very soon. And on this one, I do have just some random um, cookbooks. My whole cookbook collection is right here. Some of the things that I love to have. And I here I see that I hid some candies from my kids, some plastic containers that I hardly use, but I just keep just in case we need something on the go. And whenever I'm invited to someone's house and I want to bring something along, I use these plastic containers to take things along with me. And the rest of those shelves are empty as well. And this uh, cupboard, I have all of my glassware for like, you know, soft drinks. Then I have my salad containers, my, um, I don't know what, what are the, the corningware set that I have, salad spinner and some processor stuff up all the way over there. I finally in this house have my double sink. So if you're not aware, in a Jewish household, you need to have a separation be between milk and meat. And my whole entire life, married and not married, I used to have only one sink and we would have to kosher the sink with like soap and water before using it for um, milk or meat in, bet like in between using it for milk and meat. But finally, when I was designing this kitchen, I needed to have my two sinks. So this is, I got the, obviously the most biggest kind because I host a lot, I you know I have a large family Baruch Hashem and I wanted that space. And as you can tell, we have different sponges for each section. Usually we would have red for meat and I do have two here. And if you're wondering why, it's because this kind of material sponge we use for Shabbat. We're not allowed to squeeze any water out 
and usually for dairy we have the blue kind and i have a shabbat sponge here and a regular everyday sponge here this you will also see in a jewish house it is a cup where we wash our hands between eating we are instructed to always wash our hands before eating it's very hygienic removes all germs and there's a specific ritualistic way of washing your hands after using the bathroom and a different way when you're about to be eating bread Right next to my sink, I do have a dishwasher. I only have one and that is completely fine. I'm very happy with having a dishwasher. Um, I did not have a dishwasher for the first 10 years of my marriage or before I was even married. So I am okay with washing dairy dishes by hand. There are a few Jewish households who have two dishwashers or some even are able to kosher in between and make use of the same dishwasher for both milk and meat you would have to consult your rabbi and find out how to do that properly and right next to my dishwasher and sink i do have this cool shelf right here uh, cupboard where i keep all of my cutting boards I love how this looks. I love where it's placed because it is right next to my kitchen island where I'm able to prep all of my food. So I just take it out, place it right here, and it is just makes sense. And I love that a lot of the things in this kitchen just make sense. Under my kitchen cabinet, I have the typical things that you would normally find under the sink. I have my garbage bags, my soaps, my pods and my sponges i also have some spray some stainless steel wipes and i showed in a video how i organize this entire space and i'll have that video linked up above for you if you are curious on how i did it all i personally love the clean sleek look of a fridge with nothing on it but i also like to display all of my kids things so i'm lucky that i have this magnetic side so this is where i keep all of my kids uh, crafts and pictures but when you just enter the kitchen everything looks sleek and nice so as you can tell i am pretty minimal when I display things in my kitchen. I just enjoy it that way. This is a pretty cool device from GE. It basically it's a program that knows when it's Shabbat or a Jewish holiday and it basically ensures that the lights will stay on in the refrigerator the entire time so we're able to open and close our fridge on those particular days without having to um, be Michal Shabbos which is breaking Shabbat. Up next, I'll show you my refrigerator and how I organize it. So I love this refrigerator because it's so wide and it's not like crazy deep where I can't see what's going on on the inside. So as you open up the fridge, at the very top I have my eggs, my sourdough starter is there, some olives, just like condiment stuff right here, some dairy-free butter. And then on the lower shelf, I have all of our leftovers. I keep the salads on one side and all of my meals that I've prepped on the other. And on the lower shelf, I have my vegetables, the celery, the carrots, onions, garlic. I use a lot of herbs in my food. So I have my herbs here, some lettuce as well. And then the typical fruit and vegetable drawer. And my dairy section here with my butter, yogurts, and cheeses. On the left side of the fridge, I have all of my sauces, my milks. I know the milks should be kept on the inside of the fridge, but I just prefer it this way. It's much easier for my kids to get to it in the morning. And I have my different barbecue sauces and um, my whipped cream and caramel sauce that I'm using in my coffees now. And as you can see, everything is kosher in this refrigerator. Everything has a kosher symbol. And this is what this side looks like. On the other side of the fridge, I have up on top all of my spreads, like the strawberry jelly and the Pesach Zman and the Lotus Biscoff. I have my dressings over here, my tahini dressing, my mayo, my different juices and wines and baking soda. And there's a Snickers bar that one of my kids put in here. I guess it was melting. 
for my freezer i organize it in this way on the very top i have all of my dairy stuff so i have my frozen pizzas my different ice creams my um dough that i've showed you where i make my uh, my malawak dough where I make my pizzas or goshki jazz with my extra tomato sauce. I have an ice maker here and on the bottom is everything meaty and fishy. So I have all of my different meats and chickens here. And that's how I organize my fridge and freezer. Right in between my dishwasher and refrigerator, I do have a step stool so that my kids can step on it to like wash their hands. And I also have my warming tray in here. This is what we use to heat up our food on Shabbat. So we would plug this in before Shabbat starts and we would place all of our food items on it and it would keep everything warm so that we're able to have hot food over Shabbat. Now we're going to be moving on to the kitchen island. Over here I do have my garbage. I have two bins of garbage over here. And above that I placed in my Reynolds wrap, parchment paper, plastic wrap in here so that I could easily use it when I'm cooking and I have to wrap something and put it in the oven. Right next to that I wanted to have all of my kitchen utensils. So I have my rolling pin, my can openers, my um, spoons, spatulas, peelers, and the like. And on the bottom right over here, I have all of my pots and pans. This is all for meat, not for dairy. And I have everything organized right over here. In this section right here, I have all of the baking stuff. So I have another rolling pin, spatulas, whisks, different cups and measuring cups and different measuring spoons. And I have some scissors here in the bag. And on the bottom of that, I have my food processor, which I use often, my really large mixing bowls, and my food processor attachments are right over there as well. Now moving on to the other side of the kitchen, uh, as soon as you walk in, there is an in-kitchen pantry over here, which I've done a whole video of how I organized it. And if you'd like to see it, I'll have that video in the description box as well. here I have my disposable bakeware and I have some snacks when like people come over I'll just take these things out and because I host a ton sometimes I just run out of dishes and I have my fancier dishes here my little dips dip plates salad plates um, all the like and some fancier um, silverware over here when I just don't have enough of my own and right on the bottom over here I have my full-on pantry that I use in my kitchen. And just like I said earlier, this is my dairy oven, which I am so thankful for that I didn't have in all of my other years of uh, being a religious Jewish woman. It makes life so much more easier, but definitely not a necessity. You could still run a Jewish household and a kosher household without it. So definitely speak to your rabbi that you trust to help guide you along on how to do that if that is you, if you just have one oven like I did all my other years of my life. Right underneath my dairy oven is where I have this pull-out drawer with all of my bakeware sets. I have my baking sheets and my cupcake trays and the like. And on the bottom of that, I have some more bakeware stuff, my bundt cakes, my, my um, other trays as you can see here. Right next to my dairy oven is my entire dairy shelf. So I have my dairy mixer up there, my dairy cake pans, my skillets and pot, and I have my kosher coffee station right here. 
and I showed you the pods in my in-kitchen pantry. So this whole section is dairy. And right below here in my first pull-out drawer are all of my dairy utensils. And so that I don't get mixed up with my wooden spoons, I did write dairy on the top of it. And this is where I basically keep everything that is dairy. On the bottom of that, I have my kids' cereal bowls or mugs, my butter holder, and plates. This is also all dairy. Right at the bottom here, I just rearranged this, are some more bakeware sets that couldn't fit in my baking section and my husband's grilling things. It's a whole hodgepodge of stuff in here, but I'm sure I'll find a place for them. You know how when you just move into a kitchen, you keep reorganizing to the way that you like until you finally like the perfect spot for everything. And these two cabinets, I have all of my meat dishes here. This I placed right here so that I can easily take these things out and put it onto the dining room table, which is right here. And I have my large plates, my fish plates. As you can see throughout the years, I have broken a few of them or I should say my children have. So it's a little bit hard. I'm probably going to need a new set pretty soon. And to continue here, I have some more salad bowls, soup bowls and platters up above. Right below our dinnerware set, I have my utensils, my spoons, forks, and knives are here. I do have two different sets. So I use an everyday set that's all the way in the back and my Shabbat and holiday set is all the way in the front. And here are all of my knives. In my middle shelf here, is where I have all of my Pyrex dishes. A few of them are in the dishwasher and a few of them are in the fridge. So this is where I keep my round shaped Pyrex dishes. And on the bottom shelf is where I keep my square ones. In this middle pull-out drawer is where I have all of my Ziploc bags, sandwich bags, and gallon-sized bags so that my kids can pack their snacks. I used to have the reusable kind, but they did not work well with me, and uh, my kids would constantly forget to bring them back. So for now, I'm just using these because they're just more convenient. And this shelf right here are where we have our grab-and-go plates and spoons, forks, cups, and napkins. I place this low enough so that my kids can reach it as well. If they want to make themselves a drink or everything is in the dishwasher, they are able to grab these plates, spoons, forks, cups, napkins for themselves and make do. On my lower shelf over here is where I have all of my really large um, plates and bowls that I hardly use for when I have my guests over, but I do like to have this here so I can easily access it when I need it. Now in the basement, I do have a few cupboards and shelves where I keep my Passover dishes. And I have a refrigerator here that's like, you know, whenever I need to have another fridge, it's always good to have. So I keep all of my Passover things here. I can definitely store this upstairs in my regular kitchen, just put it on the side. But because I have the space, I do keep everything here. I do cover everything with plastic so that dust doesn't settle on them. And this is just a continuation of my kitchen. I have different Passover utensils here, bakeware stuff. I have a bunch of projects from this school year that my kids did that I didn't want to throw away. Some pots and pans. In this drawer, I have all of my um, silverware and some more pots and pans here as well for Passover. 
I hope you guys all enjoyed this look into my Orthodox Jewish kosher kitchen. Hopefully it answered any questions that you may have about a typical kosher kitchen. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. It'll help me out so much. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this. And I'll see you all next time. Happy prepping from my family to yours.